In this video, I chop up way more than I can chew by trying to sculpt a giant tree with a little chainsaw. My wife and I recently moved out of the country and I'm keen to put the new property through its paces by trying to make big art. And I'm gonna start off by getting on my big tractor. This video is brought to you by EcoFlow and the brand new Delta II portable power station and the Delta II solar generator. More about those amazing products later in the video. Hey, go! We got big things in store today. I'm gonna sculpt a giant stump. This is the piece of wood I shall sculpt. Michelangelo said that he didn't create a sculpture, he simply set it free. And I picked this one because I see within this wood a horse, specifically a horse's head. Here's the neck arched over in a dressage position, which is fitting because this is a bit of a horse property that I got with my wife and her birthday is next week. I'm gonna see if I can get this done in time for her birthday. So first things first, time to gear up and start shaving this head back. As you can see, it's on its side and that's because this big bloody bit of wood is far too heavy at this point, especially to stand upright. So first order of business is to try and get a bit of a center of gravity by shaving the base in a way that could be a bit more centered and taking off as much of the mass as I can justify without losing the vision of the horse. As you can see, this is a grueling process, but one that I've signed up for, being a man on the land now. I'm a farm man. Uh, this was way more time consuming than I expected and the chainsaw was not moving through the wood as fast as I had hoped and in fact I was a little concerned that something maybe wasn't right and I uh, called for help. Specifically the place where I bought my gear from. I had the suspicion that my chainsaw was too small. I'm gonna need a bigger chainsaw. G'day Elijah. So, I might need your, your advice or help. All right, well do you wanna just, do you wanna just come out if you've got it, if you had 15 minutes to sort of show me how you might handle it yourself, that could yeah, help. Yeah, 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 100% man, I'll come out. Okay, cool, see you soon. Takes a real man to ask for help. All right, Elijah's here. Uh, so I'll take off my work hat, put on my business hat. I bought the chainsaw and gear off Elijah. Thanks hey, for coming, man. Oh, you like it's doing a beautiful job, yeah. except I, I'm regretting not getting a bigger one. So there's quite, quite a bit to take off. I think if I if I extend this, we'll and if you can show me how to swap the chain and just check its sharpness, I can do that for you, mate. beautiful. Easy. And so my hero arrived, Elijah from Warrigal Forest and Garden. I don't often plug locals, but honestly, this guy's been so helpful and friendly. Interrupting his day to just come help me hook up chains, gave me a bunch of extra chains and extended my chainsaw and the difference it made was immediate and huge. And getting a refresher on how to change chainsaw blades was really helpful, especially considering that in the coming days, I would swap the chainsaw blade over about seven times. <laughs> now with all that said, I don't know why I feel the need to address this, but I, I've made a few little passing jokes at uh, being tough enough to do this stuff. And I think it really just comes from a silly self-conscious place. Even though I grew up on a farm, well, hobby farm, out in acreage in the country of Victoria, trying to do stuff that might be consistent considered specialist, especially in front of other people who are specialists, makes me feel a little bit silly, especially if I'm uh, dressed for the occasion. <laughs> But in reality, everyone I'm surrounded by is just super friendly, whether it be the tradies around the property or Elijah who came to give me a hand. And even though I'm a little bit nervous about having a 12 acre property to try and maintain and look after, which is, you know, it's, I have the tendency to bite off more than I can chew and I'm hoping this isn't the case here. I'm aware it's gonna come with its challenges. And I'm just hoping and excited, honestly, to, to tackle it, do the best job that I can. And the experience of learning things along the way and getting help from people who know what they're doing has just been really positive. And I have to say the side benefit of, you know, being surrounded by a bit of green and some animals when I have a day job that really keeps me busy and behind a desk is pretty nice. It's it's really helping my work-life balance and even give me opportunities to do projects like this, which is pretty fun and pretty ridiculous. As you can see, the majority of this project is just taking off chunks, fairly big chunks, but at the same time, it doesn't seem to be shaping the wood into a grand majestic horse visage very rapidly. This is a much more time consuming process than I expected, which can be said for pretty much every project I take on because I'm an over optimist, but it is really fun. And the fact that you are taking off big chunks one at a time is also very satisfying.
Now to continue the sculpt, there's only so much that I can do with it laying on its side like that, so I had to try and flip it. Now fortunately, there are a few workers on side who, who could lend their expertise and giant tractor and skills to try and flip it over so I could continue sculpting. It required a little bit of finessing and teamwork, but we got there in the end and it gave me the opportunity to see how much more work I had to go, which is a lot. There's a lot, this is, I'm barely touching the surface here. <laughs> All right, we've flipped her over. The entire goal of what I'm doing is trying to remove the mass so that it's less top heavy so that I can stand it up. All right, now I've already cut a big cut down the middle somewhere that I want to follow through, but I've flipped it and I can't see my cut. Oh, there it is. Let's go. Ah, oh, I ran out of battery, Gareth. I was almost finished this cut and I ran out of battery. Oh, that's disappointing. Or at least it would be if I don't have a bunch more batteries constantly charging, even if I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'm not in the middle of nowhere, I'm in my backyard. But if I were in the middle of nowhere, thanks to EcoFlow and the Delta 2, which is brand new, I can keep my charges going all day, no matter what I'm running. EcoFlow is proud to introduce the Delta 2, the handy portable power station as a new must have home appliance. You can power over 90% of your home appliances for long run times with a large one to three kilowatt hour expandable capacity and 1800 watt AC output. Enjoy fast charging from both AC or solar and smartly control all of it from the handy app. The Delta 2 is now the longest lasting power station with an LFP battery that allows everyone to use clean and stable power for long periods of time. And you can charge entirely from solar power in three to six hours with their portable solar panels. Camera batteries, phones, and chainsaw batteries won't make the Delta II break a sweat. And I'm pretty sure anything you plug into it, it'll be more than capable of keeping powered. The EcoFlow Delta II is not just a battery, but an essential home appliance, whether for daily home usage, outdoor, or traveling. It's an eco-friendly power solution for you and your family anytime, anywhere. Head to my link in the description and visit EcoFlow's green energy solutions and check out this amazing new technology for yourself. A huge thank you to EcoFlow and the Delta 2 for sponsoring this video. Ran out of battery. Ooh, got a battery. Thanks to Delta 2. <sighs> Ready to go. No delays and no fuel or pollution. All right, let's finish this cut. I really hope this works, otherwise I've lost my axes forever. I was certain that would uh, that would just split it and uh, no. What have I done? It's at this point, even though I was biting off more than I could chew with this project, that I started to get into a bit of a rhythm. Enter kinesthetic learning. Specifically, I was getting a good feel for when to change the blade, when to switch to the axes just to finish off the job, and when the chainsaw was having too much resistance based on either where I was working or how I was using the chainsaw. There really is something to dabble before you dive, and I guess my dabbling was trying to chainsaw with a blunt chain and very little experience. We're swapping to sharp chains every half hour, keeping it topped up with chains or oil and of course working to my epic country music rock electronica playlist which <laughs> just keeps you going so my friendly tractor neighbors aren't here anymore so it's all down to me <laughs> i'm gonna try and stand it up let's see let's see how this goes uh, just a good idea yeah i'm just gonna try and lift it up and move forward oh that's heavy forward oh too far too far Look, I can feel some give in there. Let's see how much it takes to finish it off. Ah, oh, come on. This is the part where I take my shirt off and glisten. This is what I am. You're beautiful. <laughs> You're so white. It's because I don't go outside, Gareth. With the last few major chunks removed, it's time to see if I can stand this up and if I'm getting closer when it comes to my proportions and positioning. Look, it's not upright, but I can at least clean up the angle of the base and get it upright tomorrow. But we've reached the end of our day today and I think that was a solid, solid result for a hard day's work. What do you reckon, Gareth? Good job, sir. So we're coming back. So first things first, I need to really figure out how I'm going to shape this. All right, so I've got a couple of photos to work with here. This hopefully will make it clearer how to shape this horse head. I need to trim off a bit more of a wedge. And now I think I actually need to figure out the shape of the horse. The chin is too low. I need, I need some consultation. Hey Kate, can I have you here for a second? I'm going to have to spoil the birthday surprise. 
I think because if I don't get her advice, it might not look good to her. And that's sort of what matters most in this. I am sculpting a horse head. It's vaguely like a horse. It's a little bit the pro like I was a Yeah, I was going for <laughs> So this is where I'm at. I'm I'm removing more to be smaller. I mean, really, what you're going for is more of a chess piece look. Yeah. That more upright thing, aren't Yeah, you? yeah. But does that look horseish? That looks good. I was hoping to have something done for your birthday. I don't think I'll have it done, but you'll get a late birthday present. I love it. <laughs> okay, let's mark up my big block of wood and then let's cut it up. All right, plans in place and practice has been done. Time to swap out the chains, top up the oil and rip into this thing. Having remarked the wood, it should in theory be as simple as following one cut after another to whittle down to the shape that is gonna make our horse come to life. You know, it's at this stage that I'm realizing, you, you know, a vast majority of this video is watching me do the same thing. Like, oh, there's always cutting into a log with a chainsaw and he's hitting it with an ax and it looks remarkably the same as it did, uh, you know, two thirds of the video ago. <laughs> And that's about how I was feeling during the project. I'm like, you know, I've been working on this for two days straight and I feel like I'm looking at a big log. So my goal for this video is to make it look like something other than a big log. Let's see if we can get there. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna level with you guys. This is a lot harder than I <laughs> expected. I'm gonna try and tip it up. Maybe that'll help our perspective here, but that alone is also gonna be an added challenge. All right, step one, drive forward. No, no, step one, take off the brake, drive forward. That's step two. I need to line up as straight as I can so I'm not tipping it sideways at all. Whoa, hang on. Straighten, straighten. Okay, I'm in high gear. Let's go to low gear. All right, you ready? It's nice and slow. There we go, there we go. And up. Uh, uh. Up quick, up quick, up quick. And forward, and up, and left. Oh no! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Just drive, drive backwards, drive that, don't ruin it. Just another bloody day at the farm. <laughs> Hey, that's all right. You know, I mean, it's got a sloopy nose, but I haven't actually properly sculpted anything, really. Oh, shit. It's the end of the time I've allotted to do this project, and I haven't really sculpted anything, really. All right, I'm in the home stretch here, at least for my blocking. Get it? Blocking? Because it's, it's a big, big block of wood still. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm here all week. And my goal for this video is, I guess, to make it look like a geometric uh, chess piece with a plan to come back later and make it look as refined as possible in a future video. Now I'll get to that because I do have a plan. But in the meantime, I'd like to bring your attention to this shot where I'm cutting off the length of the nose of my sculpture. This would be one of my greatest regrets because it turns out uh, while I wasn't referencing any visuals while cutting my horse, horses have longer noses than I accounted for. Uh, so while this is starting to look like something, it may be starting to look a little more like a dog or a bear than a horse. Let's see if that can be rescued. Subscribe to find out. <laughs> you look exhausted. You're so sweaty. I'm going to be honest, Gareth. Yeah. I need help. <laughs> I have moved this as much as I am confident and I'm actually really happy with that. But it's at the stage where if I keep going, I might take off too much. And I also don't think I have all the right equipment for sculpting. However, there happens to be a championship wood sculpting master 
who lives one town over. This was brought to my attention thanks to Elijah who came to help me out with the chainsaw. Thank you, local community. He also gave me his details and I'm going to see if I can ring him and convince him to uh, help me out with part two of this video. G'day, Brandon, how you going? It's me, Jazza. Hey, Jazza, how are you? Yeah, good. Um, I was wondering if if you'd be willing to help me finish off this uh, sculpture I've started. First of all, I might send you a picture. This is as far as I got and I'm going to be honest, I don't have the tools or expertise to keep going and I have a feeling you're the man to go to to try and figure out how to do this without stuffing it up. All right, cool. I think the um, the face is a bit too short, so horses have quite a long. Oh no. I reckon if we get creative, we might be able to salvage something. Definitely. Yeah, we can make we can. <laughs> All right, you're a legend. I'll, I'll be in touch. That's optimistic. Just because it looks like a dog or a bear more than a horse doesn't mean it won't look like a horse later. I'm going to turn this one into a part two and hopefully Brandon will be able to help me turn this into something befitting of bequeathing this to, I'm just words, I'm just so many, I'm just, I'm done. I'm done as far as I can by myself. But I will see you in the part two and though that might be a month or two away, I'll see you in the next video because we have some really cool stuff happening here. Make sure to subscribe for more fun with art and creativity. Thank you for watching this. Hit like if you enjoyed how far I pushed myself here. Did I say all the YouTube things, Gareth? Yeah, I think so. And then bloody, I've got to say country YouTube things. And fucking, uh, f <laughs> uh, yeah, that Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs>